Hello there and welcome back to my channel. Thank you for watching. Now today I have for you some gammon save positions taken from a recent match I played against Grandmaster Dirk Schiemann, an incredibly strong German player. Now I played him as part of a Stream Champs tournament where top YouTube backgammon content creators come together to play each other. So people like Dirk, Nick Blazier, Alex Ashargan, John Giorgio, and a bunch of other people coming together to play each other, to offer commentary, to share their ideas and knowledge. So check out their channels and watch this space. You will see more matches come up in due course and a good learning opportunity there for the backgammon community. And of course, if you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to like and subscribe. So let's talk about gammon save now this is the first position taken from the match i will put a link also to that match against dirk Schiemann in the video description so if you want to see that full match with dirk's commentary then please check that out afterwards but now to the position white has a 2-1 to play the match is 2-7 Green is on two, so five away from winning. White is on five, so two away from winning. And the cube has been turned. White owns the cube. So how would you make this 2-1 play? Feel free to pause the video and have a moment to think about it. Now, the correct move here is 23 to 22 and 8 to 6. Now we're going to talk quite a lot about this position but first I just want to say that the hitting play is pretty bad because you leave blots everywhere, give green a ton of returns and the score matters. You simply play quietly here and reduce gammons. Now if we look at a comparison here between the best play on the left and the blunder on the right of making the hitting play we can understand why it's incorrect. Now you may think that, well, hitting is great. I send that checker back behind a three prime. Like how bad can it be? Now a hitting play on the right does win 6% more games, but it loses 15% more gammons than the correct play on the left-hand side. And losing that many gammons is very, very costly at the score as he would take green to Crawford and vastly reduce our match winning chances as white. And that is 15% more gammons before green has hit us back. And we're gonna have a lot of blots for green to attack. Notice already, we already have three white checkers behind green's five prime. Every other checker we get sent back behind that five prime will add an additional seven or eight percent in gammons. So we really do not want gammons to increase any further. So here we simply step up to a 22 point and play a 22 point holding game and make the gammon saving play on the left. Now for money, the situation is different and the hitting play is only a marginal mistake. And that is because gammons are less costly for money than they are at certain match scores. When we are leading two away, five away, losing a gammon on a two cube rather than a single would halve our winning chances as white from 60% to 32% using a match equity table, which you can view on XG or go onto Google and look at the equity at different scores and match winning chances. So that would halve our match winning chances if we allowed our opponent to get to a Crawford score. So simply be really mindful of saving a gammon and preserving your match lead. We do not want uh, green to overtake us in the match. So here we simply just make the quieter play. Now we can think more as well in terms of gammons, and I'll get onto that in a moment. But here, how would you play a 3-1 as white? Notice the score, two away for white from winning and five away for green. 
Now, well done if you followed the instruction and you make the 10 point and a hitting play is an error. Now, the hitting play does win 8% more games, so it would be right a DMP. But here, it loses 15% more gammons and it's just too costly to lose those gammons. Obviously, that would go up further if green hit us back. Now, it's just too risky at the score because at this score, where we are two away from winning and our opponent is five away, our opponent's gammon value is high at 0.7. Now, for money, the gammon value is 0.5. So the plays change and gammon saving plays aren't as important when a gammon value is lower. But when our opponent's gammon value is high at 0.7, that means gammons matter more. He wants to win a gammon and we want to save a gammon. Of course, it's very efficient for Green to win a gammon, and take him to Crawford, where the cube would be out of play. And here, the hitting play also increases our gammons, but we don't need to win a gammon, and actually our gammon value here as white is zero, because we're two away from winning, and a cube is on two, so we get no extra value from winning a gammon. We actually get an overage of two points. But for our opponent, it's a different matter. So when the gammon value is higher than money, 0.7, we need to just be very mindful of not making plays as white that leave us in a position where we're more likely to get gammoned. Here, gammons, of course, are more valuable for our opponent than they are for us. Let's look at this last one where white has a 2-1 to play. Now the correct move here is you enter on a 23 point and shuffle up 11 to 10 and hitting is a big blunder. Now here after the hit 8% more gammon losses and a reduction also in wins and the same is also true for money making the second anchor is just too good to turn down. Simply make both anchors and play a back game with not great timing, but it's better than nothing. Obviously, when you have the anchor, your opponent can't attack you, so gammons are going to be lower. Now, anchors have less value at DMP when losing a gammon doesn't matter, but at this score, when we're trailing, and gammons are valuable for our opponent, we simply just want to make the anchors for safety, so green cannot attack us. Now, if we round up with some of those tips, now don't hit just because you can. It's often very, very tempting to see the hit, to make the hit, but just be very, very careful that the hit doesn't leave you overexposed and prone to lots and lots of returns and getting sent back behind a five prime. Be mindful of gammons, particularly when you are leading in the match. Preserve your match lead. Do not allow your opponent to catch up and be extra mindful when a cube has been given. As gammons count double with a cube on two, then you're gonna lose four points on a gammon, which is a lot of points in a short seven point match. So these are certain things to think about. Gammon save is really important. And certainly every time you start a new game, just check the score. You know, are you trailing? Are you leading? What's a gammon value? You can look at this information, cube information on XG, and you will see how it fluctuates at certain scores, four away, two away, the gammon value is extremely high for the trailer. So it really, really does matter at certain scores to know this information to really improve your game. And just a shout out at the end for Stream Champs, the tournament of YouTube content creators, lots of good matches 
coming up soon. Lots of commentary, lots of fun, lots of learning. Do check out those channels, some other people. Feel free to watch a Dirk match um, I mentioned earlier where he offers some great commentary himself. So lots of things coming soon for the Backgammon community. Thank you for watching. I hope that was useful. Some useful tips on Gammon Save that hopefully you can apply to the board and lose fewer points and preserve your match lead. So thank you so much for watching. See you next Wednesday. Goodbye.